So you're here because, well, you probably love virtual reality, or at the very least, you're interested in it. Much of the hype we hear in the news is often related to games. Now I love a game, but the truth is, I got into virtual reality not for the gaming, I got into it because every 10 years or so, a technology comes along which is going to change everything. Virtual reality is that thing. It's way, way more than just a gaming machine. Virtual reality is revisiting your holidays in full 360. It's experiencing things that you're too scared to do. You know, things that you're never going to get to do in real life maybe. Skydiving, ski jumping, walking in space. Visiting anywhere in the world that you want is watching movies at home, but not in a cinema. But you can do that either on your own or with your friends. It's watching your favorite artist at front row of their concert, but doing it from your sofa. Or maybe it's sitting right at the front of a soccer match or a football match, basketball, baseball, whichever is your favorite. It's meditation or having a workout without those expensive fees. It's also being a pilot and flying across the world in a Boeing 747 or whatever plane you fancy being in. So virtual reality is just full immersion. You can actually do these things with the feeling of doing them. It's hard to explain it, but this is going to bring people together in ways that you can't yet possibly imagine. Every company and celebrity in the world is going to have the ability to interact with you within VR. VR is more than just a gaming machine. VR is going to be a way of life. It's going to be a necessity for the future. And this channel has not even got started on what augmented reality is going to do. So VR is our next evolution and VR Escape is here to guide you on that journey. So if you're interested in what else VR can do for you outside of gaming, and just stick around and I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do right now. There's quite a few apps now which allow for full 360 video viewing. Some of you probably think it's a little bit gimmicky, which it kind of is if you're doing it from your phone. Do it in VR though, and you're transporting yourself into the video you're actually looking at. If you own an Oculus headset, they've built into the software the Oculus TV app. There is some really great content to get stuck into. You can attend a party in Asia, actually feel like you stood next to that DJ, just off the dance floor. Or how about sitting on this roller coaster, you know, overlooking some of these ladies here who, I'm not sure they're quite dressed for the occasion. Alternatively, you can just stand on the beach, sat in the sun here, listening to the waves and forgetting the trials and tribulations of life. After that, maybe you can shoot on over to the YouTube app inside your headset and play some of the 360 content uploaded by its community. Now in this scene here, I'm actually hovering over some I don't know, just a forest somewhere in the world, probably in Asia, it's always got the best stuff. I then attended a party in the middle of the desert. Now this one put a smile on my face, although it was kind of weird. Why is it weird? Maybe it was inappropriate. Either way, I wanted to be there, and this is probably as close as I'm gonna get. I then went off snowboarding, and if you're as useless at snowboarding as I am, then doing it danger-free is much more satisfying. Like, okay, I'm looking through the eyes of someone else, and you're going to wonder, do you feel a bit motion sickness? Well, I didn't at all. And I was just sat there watching what it was like to actually fly down a mountain. Well, not literally fly down a mountain, but you get, you get where I'm going. Now, another awesome thing with 360 is that when you buy your own camera, you can also create your own content and relive some of your holidays. So I use an Insta360, which I highly recommend. They are still improving the resolution on these things, but Honestly, more than watchable, still enjoyable, and again, transporting myself back in time to relive a holiday or an excursion I went out on for the day. The footage you're seeing here is of me, so these are places I've been to, and through VR, I can go back and relive them anytime I want. Just imagine in the next 10 years, being able to sit back in the same room as your five-year-old children. You can literally transport back in time to go and do that again. You can do that, 360, it's fantastic. Travelling the world has been made very easy through the creation of that awesome app, Google Earth. Now this is a free app, but it is an absolute must. You do need a PC for it, 
So if you've got only a Quest, then don't worry, your luck's not out. You can still download an app called Wonder. This is one of the experiences which is quite hard to explain, but I guarantee you, and this is an absolute guarantee, that once you put that headset on, your jaw is gonna hit the floor. Now I've spent hours of my time wandering around the planet, revisiting old holiday locations or doing what everyone else does, looking at my house. When it comes to traveling around the world, you just don't need any other app. This is the closest you're gonna get other than 360 video. But oh man, am I excited about the potential opportunity this has got for the future. For example, you can go check out your holiday location before you go. Check out that hotel room, villa or apartment before you book it. Or maybe a multiplayer capability to go and chill out on that beach in Thailand with one of your friends whilst you know you catch up after a tough week of work. Another favourite of mine is an oldie but a goldie, the BBC Spacewalk, which from my perspective is probably the closest you're ever going to get to going into space without actually going into space. Now I've got a small fear of heights, so my legs actually turned to jelly when I first played it. The earth below feels like a long way down. So in terms of travel, going in to VR is as close as you're going to get to actually travelling. Highly recommended. So I've already made a video on watching movies in VR, so I'm not going to spend too long on this. If interested in that, click the link above. But what I will say is the experience works really well. This is an experience which is going to get better, probably with every iteration of a new headset, such as things like higher resolution and wider field of view. For now though, you can use applications such as Big Screen and Amazon Video to enjoy their cinema experience, and watching movies in 3D works really well too. If you want to stream your home content from platforms such as Plex, then download Skybox because that's got network capability which is going to connect to your media server, you know, and away you go. This capability is also available on big screen. At the moment, in 2021, I wouldn't recommend Netflix. The app is long overdue an update, so the resolution is super low. This is a really interesting area because it's not fully formed yet and you could say that most of these people are kind of almost beta testing these types of apps and of course the audience just isn't quite there yet as you'd expect with VR not being fully mainstream yet but if you dig deep enough you'll find that the capabilities do exist so for example in the UK there's an app called Sky Worlds which comes as part of your Sky package when you purchase it over here which is still kind of in beta but having had a play I was really impressed I was able to sit right at the front of the stadium and just watch from kind of almost any angle I wanted to. I also had my own box that I could sit in and again watch the game from. I also had the capability to play back and watch 2D matches. Again, worked really, really well. Such an awesome environment and a really nice experience. In the US, there's a Fox Sports VR app, which is very similar to Sky Worlds, although it felt much more polished with some really good content to watch. There's some super neat features too, allowing you to choose that the angle you want to watch the game from. But again, that was also in 2D, but still, heaven for a sports fan. I think, guys, this is the future of watching sport. Really exciting stuff. For concerts, way more tricky. The pandemic has seen a big boost in that popularity, and I can see there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, but probably that's for another video. But some of the platforms I kind of haven't worked out that well. So there was a um, Wave XR, formerly known as Wave VR, and they unfortunately have just pulled the plug on the whole VR app. Apparently it wasn't popular enough. Again, I guess I'm not surprised. This is a growing platform, but it had so much potential. There was also Melody VR, which is really good. Um, had some good artists on there, but the visual quality is just too poor. It's just not enjoyable watching it like that. There's also an app called Noise VR, which has been around for a few years now, and you can really get a glimpse of the capabilities using that. Um, you can also watch a fair few concerts in full 360 on YouTube. That capability still exists at the moment. Unfortunately, we aren't quite there yet for the front row seat of your, of your concert, but there are opportunities. I recommend having a look at Noise VR. Give that a go. Watch some concerts on YouTube, um, and I will keep you posted once I see that glimpse of the concert app that's going to hit and change everything. Oh yeah, so VR is the best place for working out. You can have a really hardcore workout. My only recommendation to you at this point is get a silicone face cover because you're going to need it to wipe that sweat away. So in terms of apps, there are a lot to choose from. So I will do a separate video in detail on all the different workout apps. I just need to muster myself up for a month of working out and recording it. 
The apps available vary. There's Fit XR, which is a rhythm based boxing game with some added dance workouts. If you fancy a full on boxing fight, then there's also Thrill of the Fight. And trust me, this is a tough game which guarantees a sweat. There's an awesome one called Supernatural, sadly only available in the US, and I read that they are having some copyright issues, which is why it's not here in the UK. The reviews, though, they speak for themselves, highly well regarded. If you like a workout through dancing, then there's Dance Central, also a fantastic development. There's quite a few rhythm based games still out there. The ever famous Beat Saber, we all know, we all love that one. And a real up and comer that I'm really enjoying myself is Synth Riders. There's a lot more to come out, probably the future of working out, right? But then after a workout, why not sit back and relax, you know, and meditate? There's a large selection for you. For the purpose of this video though, I'm just going to focus on what I think are the top two just for meditating. And number one is going to be Guided Tai Chi, which is over 100 Tai Chi inspired workouts ranging from 3 minutes up to 60 minutes. There's 20 nature environments specifically designed to help you relax. There's also then at number two, Guided Meditation VR. This sadly is not available on the Quest PC only, but has got 27 nature filled environments with 500 meditation spots across them. Pick your environment music and narrations. Plenty to get stuck into here. Ah yes, learning. Virtual reality allows for learning like never before seen in history. There's so much content. Let me just cover off for you some of the really cool ones. Immerse me. It allows you to learn a new language and practice in real world scenarios, providing you feedback on how well you did, including things like pronunciation. How cool is that? National Geographic VR lets you climb the Antarctic, meet the penguins, and basically see and learn as you explore this amazing planet of ours. These are all digital reconstructions and they have places like Machu Picchu on there. The mission is just to basically take some pictures for the National Geographic magazine. But what a cool way to learn from home. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This game is just awe-inspiring. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, this is a game. Well, it is a game, but actually it's more of an experience and the capability to learn to fly planes. The controls are identical. The panels are identical to a real plane. So if you can fly a plane in this, in theory, you can go fly a real plane. Obviously, don't you know take that as gospel. I would suggest you go and get your license. So this has an impressive 37,000 airports, 2 million cities, 1.5 billion buildings. It's got real mountains, trees, rivers, animals, and even traffic. You can basically hone to be a pilot in a variety of different lessons and it can scale to your level. So make it as easy or as hard as you like. As you can see, it's all photorealistic graphics. It's all taken from there being maps. So this is real drone footage that's taking all of that and then using AI technology and the power of their Azure platform, they can use all of that to build out the mountains, build out the buildings. So that's why you get such a realistic view of the whole planet. How about instead of traveling all the way to Amsterdam, you can go into Anne Frank's house. How about trying out that app? It's been modeled into the VR world and is an awesome experience. Maybe you're an artist. Well, there's apps for that too. There is King Spray Graffiti VR, which is an awesome load of fun. And also it stops you getting into trouble by spraying on real world walls. If you want something a little less rogue, how about Tilt Brush, which allows you to paint your masterpiece in your own virtual space. How awesome is that? In the future, folks, these masterpieces you can create, you'll be able to turn them into NFTs. But NFTs, that's a, that's a whole other discussion for another video. Well guys, that's all from me. I really do hope this was a useful video and shows you just some of the capabilities of VR outside of gaming. The future is really bright and five years from now, all of what I've just mentioned here today will probably just look outdated. I'm super excited for the next phase, but as you can see, it's shaping up real nicely already. I didn't even touch on how visiting real estate will change or how the metaverses are being created to hang out in places like in Ready Player One which is going to bring with you capability to buy and sell digital land. How about owning your own virtual home? Weird times ahead. Anyway, guys, please do remember, like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.